Guys, I have been living in Japan for one year. One whole mother friggin' year. Where has the time gone? And also, seriously, I have been living in Japan, in Tokyo, me. <laughs> shy girl with a truckload of anxiety and self-esteem issues have been living in a foreign country by myself for one year like hi everyone if you don't know me i'm iku i'm from belgium and i've wanted to move to japan ever since i was a teenager i almost moved here in 2020 but then Covid happened and well, you can look into that mess if you feel like it. I made a whole bunch of videos about my slow descent into madness during that time but at the end of March of 2022, I finally made it here and boy has it been a wild ride. So in this video, I'm going to try and recap as best as I can some of the main points slash events that happened here during the course of one year. I'll give some insight into what it was like, maybe also give some pointers, answer some questions that I got through Instagram, but also create a reference point for myself in order to look back at the one year milestone in the future and see what kind of things have changed since then. I also want to talk a little bit about my future plans here, though if you have been following me on social media, most of you already know my intentions with uh, my plans for the next few years in regards to Japan but I mean for future me to look back on and for those who don't know I want to give like a small update at the end of this video you can skip to any part that you are interested throughout this video I'm gonna put some timestamps and some chapters throughout this video so I'm gonna try and keep it structured I know myself if you've been with me for a while, you know me, you know how I like to ramble, but I'm gonna try and keep this as structured as I can. So feel free to go back and forth, rewind, you know, do your thing, do you, if you want to watch the whole thing. Thank you so much, it helps so much also on my end. And uh, if you just want to watch some segments, then I'll see you there. And uh, yeah, let's, let's begin because it's gonna be a long one. Obviously, the way I moved here was not ideal. It wasn't what I had imagined. It wasn't what I had planned, but COVID messed things up for a lot of people. And in the end, I did get here in one piece. So that is what matters. So the plan initially was to move here with enough money saved up to go to a language school live at a share house for a while and then ultimately get my own place i thought i would be moving here with enough money to go back home in case of a family emergency and i thought that i'd have enough time while living here to pop out a bunch of youtube videos outside of school that would have kept me afloat somehow even though youtube has never kept me afloat but i thought somehow japan content would help me do that and i don't know if i was delusional naive like overly optimistic but that is obviously not how things turn out at all so yeah to quickly recap like first of all COVID ate up a lot of my saved up funds while i was waiting for the borders to reopen for like two years uh, it also pretty much ate up at my mental health, but I'll I'll talk much more about that later. And then like share house life was difficult. I knew it was gonna be tricky because I am an introvert, but I did not expect to be stuck here for an entire year, like maybe six months max. And then the amount of space that school took up in my daily life was also something that I hadn't anticipated which turned time management into like this impossible math equation like this impossible juggling act and don't even get me started on work so all in all after one year in Japan I am broke I am exhausted I'm in terrible shape both physically I'm gonna cry and mentally and I'm very confused about the future, but do I regret moving here? Nope. I would probably do this all over again given the chance. Maybe differently, like there are some things that I might change if I were to do this over, but that's a question that I will be trying to answer throughout the video uh, as I go through things 
point by point and I know okay please listen to this I know that this is going to seem like an overall bad experience on my end but I'm gonna spoil the ending uh, for you straight away my life up until now has been like challenge after challenge like no rest non-stop like every time I solve one issue like something else pops up and right now it's just a little bit of the same it's challenge after challenge except it's challenge after challenge in Japan so that is um, a step up for me believe it or not so yeah I will be talking about these challenges and everything that's been going on that's happened throughout this first year in Japan and I know it might sound grim it might seem like I'm complaining I might get some comments like if you hate it here so much why don't you go back home let me reiterate and I'll reiterate re is, is this the right way to say it? reiterate reiterate I'll re try re reiterating this throughout the video that I have no regrets with my decision to move to Japan okay maybe for some moving to japan is a walk in the park like easy peasy fingers up the nose but for others their experience might be like mine or similar to mine and to those few whose lives seem messy no matter how hard they try i say do it anyway <laughs> okay so about school i feel like most of you already know that i am here on a student visa and that i'm going to a language school to learn japanese and i love the idea of going to a language school where i could learn the language of the country where I was living as it felt like a win-win situation like total immersion not to mention that I love Japanese I love the way it sounds so I was super excited to get started and I saw myself like getting fluent as soon as possible thanks to the whole total immersion thing my current school time is four hours a day outside of self-study and homework and at first I thought that four hours a day would give me tons of time to explore Tokyo, film videos and draw all about like my adventures in Japan and it could just be that I suck at managing my time but in the end these four hours of school ended up like ruling my entire day <laughs> I had to leave for school around noon and then I get back home around 5 p.m. where I take one hour break to have oh my god too warm <laughs> i'd have one hour break for um an early dinner and then i'd do homework and study until 8 p.m ish bedtime would be around 10 p.m i know super early but that would be because i would wake up at 5 a.m in order to get some work done and i'll talk more about work a little later but um I actually had the... I was lucky enough to do freelance work from home for a while and instead of doing that freelance work after a long and tiring day, I figured out that I was like more productive and effective early in the morning before school, hence the getting up at 5am on a weekday every single day. Mm. Almost every single chunk of time was divided and allocated to like schoolwork homework, studying, my work, housework, without much room for flexibility and freedom. And honestly, even though this rhythm kept a room over my head and kept me somewhat fed, um, it was exhausting, you know, like I felt close to burnout at the end of every single semester so far. And not only that, I felt like I wasn't giving enough time either to my studies or to my work, like I was just half-assing both of them that's how it felt like to me because i'm a little bit of a perfectionist but i also felt like the school wasn't happy enough with my performance and my boss wasn't happy enough with my performance even though i was trying my best but i had just i was so divided don't even get me started on my own personal projects because those were like pushed way down the priority list and it was not something that i had anticipated at all and it threw me for a loop like how how were all my classmates managing it? Like, it seemed like they were going to school and doing so well in school and still had time for outings and visiting Tokyo and some of them had like really grueling part-time jobs and here I was just exhausted, still broke, not performing that well in school. Like how did they do it? How did they find that money? <laughs> ah, It was unexpectedly crazy like school 
felt like jumping on an already activated treadmill at full speed with like no off button. And I have a feeling that it might just be a me issue like with my own like mental predispositions and etc etc which is why I'm beating myself up about my my work performances and school performances but yeah, it, it definitely threw me for a loop and that gets me into studying. As much as I'd like to think that I'm a good student, one thing that I was reminded of during this one year of being back in a school setting, which is something that I haven't done or been in uh, for <laughs> over a decade now, I think, is that I am an average student and that is something the perfectionist in me hates to be reminded of on a daily basis. It's not like anyone likes to be reminded of their shortcomings on the daily. And yeah, I definitely felt very strongly about that during this whole year. Like, why am I not doing better? Why can I not do better? Like that kind of mentality. So I put so much unnecessary pressure on myself, which is why I felt like I was burning out at the end of every semester. And also, I am not someone who thrives in a classic, traditional classroom environment. Like, it was maybe fun because it was new, like, the first few months, but I'm a little ashamed to admit that after, like, the second semester, I'm, I'm saying semester quite loosely, uh, I think it's supposed to be trimester, but so keep in mind that when I say semester, it's I'm mentioning, like, three months at the time. I'm realizing now that I'm probably saying it wrong, but I've been hearing semester all year, like spring semester, fall semester. So yeah, keep that in mind. But yeah, after the second semester slash trimester, I'm ashamed to admit that I was pretty much over it. And I think that was definitely a, a mix of poor time management on my part, being like completely stretched thin between school and studying and work, and also the absolute pressure, like I mentioned previously, the pressure I put on myself to try and keep up with others to not let show that in fact I am the most average, blandest of students. I just, I didn't want anyone to look at me like I was stupid and why? Because I have self-esteem issues, like I have probably the stupid inferior, inferiority, inferiority complex. I don't know. And I think that it was during the third semester slash trimester, uh, the fall winter trimester where I was going through a lot of things. I was going through like my first breakup here in Japan and it was during that time that I just kind of like snapped because no matter how hard I tried, I just couldn't keep up with anyone. I'm like, for what? I, I was trying my I was doing my homework and I was getting decent grades during tests. I was focusing on getting through the textbook but I wasn't progressing anywhere with actual Japanese skills, like conversational skills and listening skills. I wasn't focusing on learning the actual language, I was just focusing on being good in class, which is a mistake that so many people made and I couldn't believe that I had fallen into that trap. Like, my classmates were skipping the homework here and there, like skipping the easy tests not all of them, mind you, some of them were just really good at managing their time and were probably really good at learning a new language, but while I was trying to understand this effing textbook, they, m most of my classmates were out there like getting actual life experience in Japan while I was trapped in my room studying, not meeting, talking, listening to people. They were out there getting doing the right thing basically and actually this semester like the one from january to march so up till now instead of doing what i had been doing so far i was way more laid back not completely mind you i was still completely burned out by the end of that semester but i was less focused on textbook i was like okay you know what i'm gonna go out I'm gonna try and find language partners. I'm gonna take up maybe like private lessons. I'm gonna try talking in Japanese. I'm gonna self-study outside of the material that the school is giving me. And finally, 
in these last three months, I felt like I was doing some progress. I was missing out and I still feel like I'm missing out on experiences in Japan just because I've been completely focused on my studies and for what? Just a few good grades? I cannot to this day have a conversation in Japanese even though I've been here a year and I am so disappointed with myself because of that while I'm on the subject of language learning and low self-esteem issues, I must say that if you remember, I think it was during the last update I, I made, uh, maybe the six month mark, I do want to say that I went through an entire period of time where I was terrified of speaking Japanese, like in class with natives, I, like I couldn't, sometimes I couldn't even face like the supermarket or the convenience store because I did not want to utter a single word of Japanese because of how much I hated where I was at with my learning journey. I remember like the first semester at school I was like raising my hand, I wanted to ask questions, I was invested in class and by the six month points onwards I was like do not ask me a question in class, I was cowering away from the teacher, please don't ask me to read anything from the textbook. I did not want I just felt like a complete idiot all the time. Like I felt I couldn't communicate. I felt like I couldn't speak and I don't know. It felt like I was like a complete dum dum and I just wanted to hide and disappear into the world. I felt like I could I didn't deserve to be in in the class I was in. It was like complete Japanese block due to anxiety, mental health, low self-esteem, being lost at school, being lost in the country where I could not communicate, it, I was just isolated in this weird bubble. But I, I, I tell myself that, you know, like babies go through, through regression phases, like toddlers, like they do sleep regression and things like that, like maybe we, we also go through regression, like we also tend to plateau and maybe regress and then go back up, you know, it's not, it's not, not all linear. Yeah, it, if I'm still struggling so much through my language, Japanese language learning journey, um, and I need to tell myself that it's okay that I'm not where I want to be, but if I stop, uh, everything stops. If I continue, at least I, I'll advance somehow, even if it's just a like millimeter every day. Yeah. To end this segment about uh, school and language learning, I want to give some advice that I would probably give myself one year ago. Some of it I already knew, some of it I knew and still made a mistake, so... Um, do with it as you please. I think my first advice would be really research what kind of um, language school is better suited for your needs and your lifestyle. Um, that is something that I had already done previously. I had like this whole Excel sheet with the language schools that um, Gogo Nihon had partnered up with because those were like my options. If I were to go through Gogo Nihon, I had like a list of schools available and um, I had this whole Excel sheet with the points that were important to me, like price and intensity. Then I read Google reviews, etc, etc. Like some schools are more intense than others. My school was in the middle, I think, with four hours of school and I think they said like two hours of study and homework a day and that still ended up being like super overwhelming for me even though I didn't expect it. Um, and I also think that the lessons were way too like textbook driven and I would have like maybe a slower pace where like they took the time to really make sure that the grammar was more integrated instead of being like okay one week equals one chapter we have to like keep up the speed and not fall behind and it wasn't really it for me and also the classes at the level that i'm at were in the middle of the day like i mentioned leaving at noon and coming back at five and that really made for a difficult schedule like for time management and juggling with act other activities though next semester that i'm starting very soon actually the classes are becoming morning classes i think technically they're becoming morning classes so i'm curious to see how that will change my routine time management if any changes at all another thing to keep in mind is like the ratio of the different nationalities that usually attend this school because it might change like the dynamic of the class, like the pace of the class rather. For example, if the language school has more 
Asian students attending, like the ratio, like Asian student, Western students, etc. For example, students uh, who come from Chinese-speaking countries have the advantage with kanji, and students from uh, Korean-speaking countries have uh, like the advantage. I'm saying advantage loosely, okay? The advantage of uh, like sentence structure being similar to Japanese and some actual words being similar to Japanese. So, with that in mind, the pace of the class might be much faster because some of the students are already at a level where they can learn and assimilate faster and I think that's kind of what happened in my case because there aren't many westerners in my school like the last semester I was the only westerner in my class and it was definitely the hardest semester of them, of them all this semester I think there were three of us I think and I definitely felt closer to the other Western speaking students because I was always having to refer back to them like did you just understand that part can you help me with that part you know like that kind of thing and they would refer back to me etc etc so yeah keep that in mind it might not change anything for you it did for me but yeah apparently I'm not thriving at school at all so I don't know if it's a me thing or like like I said keep that in mind for yourself my experience is not your experience but it's maybe a good thing to keep in mind and if I had to do it again, would I change school? I don't know, because I met some really cool people at the school that I am now. Like, I think some of the people I met in time could become like lifelong friends. So I don't know if I want to change that, but I wouldn't mind having the experience in a school that is more catered for Westerners learning an Asian language, because I think that would have made the learning journey a little more, a little more bearable if that makes sense and finally the point where i made the biggest mistake of them all balance your school life with real life experience it seems so straightforward that it's ridiculous to even mention it like so many youtubers that i've watched kept mentioning it like don't rely on textbooks and it's it's so obvious but once you're in that grind of like going to school coming back doing homework doing work sleep repeat you kind of forget like you're stuck in that high school cycle again or you're just you know doing the same thing every day and you forget that you are learning a language through immersion and immersion means that you gotta get out there and get the real life experience so yeah you kind of you kind of get tunnel vision that's definitely like something if i could repeat that is something i would try and change and one Final note is that a Japanese school is an institution in Japan and if you don't know about institutions in Japan is that they can be very rigid and unflexible, is that a word? Not flexible when it comes to administration and paperwork. So if you're expecting to do like a change mid course or mid like year like study period mid semester and you think that is going to be an easy change just go in knowing that it will not be an easy change and that you will probably want to pull your hair out for anything to anything to do with ad administration and any admin any paperwork um, I went through a few months of total hell last year where I didn't know if I was going to be able to stay in Japan like the school could not give me any kind of reassurance if I was going to be able to extend my study period at the school and they couldn't give me that like until two months before my graduation date it was horrible I felt like the school was not on my side and they were like oh we'll tell you next month we'll tell you in two weeks we'll get tell you as soon as the new semester starts and I'm like I can't even plan a, like a ticket home I have like nothing waiting for me at home I have no home in Belgium I, I can't I'm like back in like COVID standby because of you. I did not like that at all. It's, it made me not like the school very much during that time. Like the trust has been broken and I'm not sure if all schools are like this but definitely keep that in mind. School equal institution and probably if you're gonna make any kind of administrative change to your initial paperwork it's probably gonna be super messy even though it might look like something super straightforward. So. The next challenging thing that I want to talk about is share house life. Now, 
I'm currently living in one of these big company name share houses and maybe I can talk more in detail about it once I'm out of here um, but I chose to live in a share house initially because I thought that it would be a good starting point here in Tokyo like it was fully furnished all costs included and it had like cool little accommodations like this one has like a small training room which was one of the reasons I chose this one because at the time I was like really obsessed with going to the gym every day and working out it's a whole other thing that <laughs> I'll get into later uh, but yeah my apparently delusional plan was to live here for a couple of months while I get used to things and earn some money while I'm here, YouTube uh, and other th amongst other things and then move to my own place uh, clearly it did not happen, I'm still here in the share house one year later but do I regret moving into a share house? no, not really, it is a good place to start and honestly if you are an extrovert I think it's a great place to start because you meet like so many people who are in the same situation as you like they're moving to a new country with a new culture and a new language and it can get a little bit lonely um, when you're you're doing that by yourself but I think that maybe share houses should be temporary if you're planning on living here long term <laughs> or if like me you're an introvert and uh, your mood can heavily be influenced by your surroundings but yeah let's go back to the beginning of my share house journey so when i applied for this share house it was back in 2020 before the covid thing and it was like brand new it was like a, the building was opening and i was going to be one of the first new residents here and it seemed it seemed awesome on the website like it wasn't too far from school it was outside the hustle and bustle of the city so even though i knew it was probably going to be a little difficult for someone like me like a little shy very much an introvert to like not have a place for myself it did seem like a, a good place to start but when i finally moved here in 2022 it was a little teeny tiny bit disappointing first of all i arrived like late in the night so it was past like the check-in hours so uh i just had to like figure things out for myself like obviously like the key was in the letterbox you know that kind of thing um but then like except for signing the contract i never met with any of the staff i didn't get any any tour no explanations but yeah obviously i got used to things i've used the laundry machine i've used the stinky microwave i found the friggin trash room if you remember like the very first few videos during that time where i couldn't figure out where the trash room was uh, but the one thing that i did not get used to one year later and most of you already know it i'm doing the drum roll really early most of you already know what i'm talking about is the kitchen, the shared kitchen, I have still almost never used it because of how much I hate it. Do I miss cooking? Absolutely, I miss cooking so much. I have not been able to feed myself properly the way I want to in over a year now. And has that impacted my physical health? Dude just look at my videos one year ago prior to moving to japan okay there's the whole covid stress but just look at my face now and then like the eye bags like how skinny i've become like the, even like the color of my skin it does not look healthy like i'm not happy with <laughs> what has become of me and no matter how many like calorie bars i try to eat and how much i try to make up for not being able to eat proper meals here i just this is this is not it this is infuriating uh, not being able to take care of myself the way i want to obviously money plays a huge part of it but seriously i cannot deal with the shared kitchen here it's I'm only using it to wash my dishes and to use the stinky microwave I'm always gonna call it the stinky microwave by the way to use the stinky microwave to heat up my oatmeal in the morning and even then I have to go into the kitchen with a mask because the smell is 
way too strong and if there's any like leftover food in the thing like i am out of there i cannot stay there i cannot i cannot see it i cannot know that it is there and by the way if you did not know i have really bad emetophobia i can't explain it it's gotten way worse over the years and smell mostly like f food smells trigger it really badly so i know it seems silly but it's a phobia and phobias are for the most part uncontrollable so what have i been eating for the past year air photosynthesis <laughs> no actually um i have a rice cooker and i've been mostly eating rice with vegetables and protein like egg and natto and tofu like really basic meals the occasional uber eats when i can afford it uh, but I'm not pleased because I am hungry quite a lot. I do get bored with my meals quite a lot and with someone like myself who always has had a hard time with food and body image, it's not the greatest situation. I am managing the way I can but yeah, all in all, Star House life, not good for me long term and I really wish I could move out. The current issue is that moving to a new place, the moving cost alone, uh, I can't afford. Like you have to give like several months in advance some of the money you'll never see again. Like it's like a gift money to the to the owners. And also if I'm to move to like an unfurnished place, which is like my goal, I want to furnish the place myself, I have to buy a whole bunch of stuff. Otherwise I'm just gonna be living on a mattress on the floor, which like repeat to COVID. I don't want to do so currently moving is not an option for someone who's on a rice diet like I am but uh, I'm definitely not in a good situation right now because I can't feed myself and because I can't feed myself I am tired I'm cranky my mental health is not good my physical health is not good um, it's not <laughs> because I'm tired and cranky I feel like my work isn't my at my best either so I'm like stuck in this cycle where I'm like not being the, my most productive self. So, share house life, maybe good at the start, really bad right now, and I'm stuck. I am stuck here. And uh, I'm also scared that soon enough I won't even be able to afford the share house. But <sighs> did I mention that I, I I don't regret moving <laughs> to Japan yet? Like this, this is all part of the challenges. Like this is the current challenge that I'm trying to solve, like the whole, money issue with my health and everything that's like the current like thing in front of me that I'm trying to figure out and I am hoping that someday I can look back at this current situation uh, sitting in my wonderful apartment in Tokyo and uh, you know pat, pat myself on the back for having withstood it all but uh, if that day could come soon I would be so very grateful because I'm freaking out. <laughs> what would I change if I were to do it all over again? Well, I know I wasn't ready to move out of the share house at, after the three month mark. I was still getting used to everything here, but maybe at the six month point, I could have tried moving out, should have tried moving out. Not really sure, like maybe. I would have moved out like to this new place like given a bunch of money to move to this new place and then I would have been like more productive more healthy and I would have earned money to make up for everything I put into that new apartment and things would have worked out fine but also maybe I would have like given all that money to move to this new place and I would have been even broke more broke than I am now and I would have been like completely screwed so it's impossible to know what decision would have been better like maybe right now is where I'm supposed to be I mean clearly right now is where I'm supposed to be in this lifeline because this is what I'm doing but you know what I mean I don't know if moving into a new apartment at the six month point would have been like the best option ever because I would have thrived there and been healthy and productive and hardworking or if it would have been just the same as now with all the school stress and work stress and I would have just been more broke than I am now because I would have given all that money to move. It's impossible to know. But, I mean, if I had to do it all over again, maybe I would try that other option to see where it leads me. Maybe down a path of total chaos and despair, even worse than where I am now. And my recommendation for those looking to move to Japan is 
Same with choosing schools. Know your lifestyle, know your preference, know what works for you while you're doing your research. Like find something that is more suited to your personality and that will help you live your best life here. Like maybe you're someone who is absolutely fine with a bed and four walls and if that's the case you have like every option available to you. You will be absolutely fine, you will be spoiled for choice. If it's your first time living alone or living alone scares you, maybe a share house situation is good for you or you can also join a host program uh, which would also be very beneficial. If you're someone who enjoys having their own dwellings, their own home, such as myself, you could go straight for an apartment, though I don't recommend like choosing an apartment from abroad, like moving into somewhere that you've never seen before. Uh, I know like a lot of people have done that and it's turned out fine. Like some agencies offer that option to people living abroad who want to move straight into an apartment. I personally wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend either first moving into a share house or an Airbnb while you do like your apartment hunting. Find something that is like exactly what you need from the get-go. Like not move into somewhere and then figure out that it's not great during the winter or the summer or like it's stinky or your neighbors suck and have to move out again with the moving costs. So that's what I would recommend. I was definitely super tight uh, on money when I came here. So my options were very limited. Um, to give you an idea, like Gogo Nihon and other like associations say that you need about 20,000 euro to live in Japan for one year without working. Um, I think actually you need to prove that you have that kind of amount. I uh, was supposed to move here for six months, so I only had to prove 10,000 euros. But I've been living on that amount for one year and it sucked. It was possible, it was hard, I had to work, obviously, um, but I don't recommend it. It's possible if you're like really passionate and motivated and this is your dream, but I don't recommend anyone do it because you don't really get to like appreciate things here. You can't go out as much as you want, you have to work your ass off, so yeah, keep that in mind. I wish I would have moved here with more money. I wish I would have moved to my own apartment after probably six months. If I had the money, I would have been way more comfortable. Probably fed myself better. Like it's everything comes down to money, basically. Like all my all my problems are related to money. Like screw you, money. <laughs> okay, it's been a little time because I had to switch batteries and wait for it to change. And uh, yeah, I was watching TikTok during that time, so the background may have changed. But yeah, let's get back into it and uh, I want to talk about health and at first I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about health because I mentioned it so much throughout the video and health is something that's going to change from person to person given their predispositions and like their past experiences yada 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 but this is a milestone video and I want to I want to address where I'm at with my health at this point in time in my in my life journey and in my Japan journey so I can look back and compare notes so for me mental health has been particularly hard during this one year in Japan um, mainly because I felt like I wasn't in control uh, as much as I'd like to be like a lot of instability of like question marks about the future, the inability to properly plan for the future, not knowing where I was going to be in like a couple of months, etc, etc. And I think that may also be due to, like, to the continuation of the two years of standby I've had in during COVID. Um, so I wonder how things would might have been different if I had moved to Japan back in 2020 before COVID happened. Uh, at one point it's like pointless to wonder what would have been if but I do keep that in mind like would have would I have been like in a stronger mindset if I had moved to Japan pre-covid and regardless of that it is moving to a whole new country away from everything you know in like different people different culture different language like walking down the street some of the things you can't even read like you feel like there's a barrier between yourself and the world so regardless of that um, the experience of moving to another country may affect you in ways that you wouldn't have expected. Like for me, for example, definitely school was the unexpected thing that threw me for a loop where I felt trapped and lousy and 
I didn't expect to feel like this even though I know that being in like that kind of specific environment like structured environment is not something that works out for me that's how I've experienced it when I've used to work like so many nine to five jobs and I had the same trapped feeling after a while so even though I didn't think Japanese language school would make me feel that way it ended up being exactly the same as what always happened and that was a little bit of a disappointment so even the best made plans that is my point I'm getting there even the best made plans can be thwarted by the most random and unexpected things and also if I have to be completely honest I was maybe subconsciously hoping that moving to Japan would be like this fresh start would be like escaping my problems from Belgium starting afresh starting anew but uh, yeah I guess you can't run away as easily as I'd hoped there is the baggage that you choose to bring with you and the baggage that you bring along no matter what I also mentioned my physical health taking a hard hit, mainly the weight loss and the fatigue, especially at the very start of moving here where the weight was just like dropping off of me no matter what I did and I felt weak all the time. It seemed like I was eating like the same kind of amounts of food as usual, but I don't know, maybe the stress or maybe Japanese food has less calories than what I used to or maybe I'm just sick and I don't know it yet <laughs> uh, but these days I've kind of given up on properly feeding myself to be honest like I went from eating like so super healthy to eating like a college student which I actually didn't even used to eat like this as a college student uh, it's super frustrating but I'm also hoping that it's just like temporary that at some point I'll go back to eating like that super healthy way that I used to do and that I'll be able to like reverse the damage I may be doing to myself uh, at the moment but apart from the weight loss and the fatigue things to be doing okay like my nails are fine my hair isn't falling out so yeah I did hear like some foreigners complain about their skin and their like hair thinning out and like having a hard time like transitioning to like Japanese environment and stuff like yeah my skin is pretty dry and my hair gets hella frizzy during summer but apart from the weight loss and the fatigue I mean apart from there there are like big issues but apart from that it's not too bad and I think that's kind of like the challenge trifecta at the moment that um, school share house life and health though actually share house life and health is kind of like money issues right so maybe it's just school and money or maybe money should be like the fourth challenging thing oh uh, gosh i'm doing a great job at structuring this video aren't i so yeah pretty different from the fairy tale vision i had of japan right like i feel like everyone hearing everything that's been happening up until now will be wondering why the hell I'm still here and yeah sure I'm not walking down the sunny streets of Tokyo greeting the nice old lady at the vegetable store uh, as she calls me <laughs> as she calls me over to give me some sweet potatoes I'm not having casual conversations with the locals and I don't have like birds and butterflies braiding my hair wherever I go right but it comes down to this I like it here it makes the challenges worthwhile and somehow i believe it'll all get better somehow <laughs> through the days i can't stop crying and having panic attacks it still feels like this is where i'm supposed to be even though that kind of doesn't really make sense you know like that thing where they say that when something is right it's supposed to just go so smoothly like everything just unravels for you and everything falls into place and for me ever since I decided to move to Japan like everything has literally gone to shit like COVID like I think it was 10 days before my flight and then everything after that like the job the school the ah like nothing has actually really gone to plan so it does kind of feel like a sign like oh maybe you shouldn't be there let's make it harder let's make her go away like show her that this is wrong you know like when you're in mario kart when you're driving in the wrong direction on the race car and you have this little sign going above like wrong way wrong way 
it kind of sometimes feels like that and I do think about that a lot and it does scare me a lot like maybe this is not where I'm supposed to be it's just where I want to be but it's not right you ah over overthinking spiral of hell it's it never ends but also there's the fact that my adult life has always been like I mentioned challenge after challenge and this is just more of that and maybe just maybe this is how life is maybe this is how life is for everyone and I'm just having a hard time compared to other people who have better skills overcoming these challenges maybe I'm, I don't have the right tools or something which is why everything seems so hard but yeah if this is how life is I might as well enjoy it where I feel good like I might as well take on these challenges in an environment that I enjoy and that is Japan like maybe there is no other side of the tunnel and there is no um, top of the hill this is just it and uh, yeah like um, if this is it, this is where I want to be for now. Yeah, and also I don't want to scare anyone from coming to Japan Like my experience hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows, but maybe you You'll do fine. Maybe you will get the sunshine and rainbows and butterflies braiding your hair I have a friend who within a year of coming to Japan obviously had their challenges along the way but within a year they graduated from language school they found a job like got a car and actually got engaged and married within that one year and for me that is like a fairy tale that is winning the lottery but I mean if it happened to one person it could happen to someone else even if it might be the lottery lightning has been known to strike twice we all have different experiences and don't let mine freak you out just learn from them as I am. Another uh, update I want to cover in this video is work. Wow, this video never ends, does it? I feel like I've been doing this for three hours, which is probably true. Okay, so I have been working this whole time while I've been living here, except for last month because I'm in between jobs right now and completely freaking out about it. But um, I first was editing adult videos uh, for other people as well as managing their social media accounts, etc did that for a while and then that ended like overnight big state of panic and then s randomly stumbled into a job where I was doing a little video editing and design work for another creator for a little while all of this is freelance so it was pretty good to juggle with school not always easy so those jobs along with my patreon page and the occasional art commission here and there currently open for commissions if you're looking just hit me up so all this together did keep me afloat up until now. Some months I had to dig into my savings, but most definitely I could not put anything aside during this one year. Like, it was always like paycheck to paycheck and sometimes into the savings, so it was never saving up, which is why I'm now in like this really precarious situation of looking for a part-time job, any part-time job, maybe McDonald's until I find a full-time job with a visa sponsorship so I can graduate from school and find the stability that I so seriously crave but yeah so far I've had no luck for either part-time job and full-time jobs hence the only fan page that <laughs> I have recently started this year because I cannot just sit on my ass and wait for someone to hire me. I need a little bit of control in my life. I'm doing everything possible, it's like scraping pennies here and there to just make ends meet and not try and dig into my savings so much. But I'm getting to that point where I'm like, this is getting really hard. I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but yeah like worrying about financial stuff like day in and day out is just it's it's not good it it's draining like for some people it will light a fire under them and get them moving but for me it just it just paralyzes me i'm like frozen in place i don't know what to do i don't know in which direction to go to i don't know if i should work at a part-time job like mcdonald's even though i know it will f with my head or focus on searching for like full-time work like I don't know. I honestly don't know where I am. That's what I meant about like being anxious about the future is because I don't know where to put my energy in at the moment. <laughs> yeah, this is where I'm at. Just explaining. 
future me if you're watching this is where you're at i'm hoping you're doing so much better because uh i'm kind of freaking out definitely overwhelmed and um i feel pretty stupid about it to be honest it's like i'm I don't know how to figure this out. Yeah, even though I'm an adult, I'm still fully passionate about wanting to do the art life and I've been wanting to do that for decades and it's not working out and uh, I'm probably gonna have to do the adult thing and just get in, get in line, fall in line. So it's been a little hard on that end. Relationships. I remember one of the things I talked about at the very beginning when I moved here is that I was excited to meet new people and make friends and my friendships have always been quality over quantity as it takes time for me to let anyone in um but i did hope to form some friendships while i was living here like create some bonds and while i haven't made like ultra close friends yet like no tribe no like ride or dies i'm happy to say that I do have some good friends here as well as some acquaintances that I'm excited to get to know more and even though there have been a lot of ups and downs I have felt isolated in class uh, I've had some conflicts with some people that I've worked with I have gone through a breakup I'm still positive and excited about meeting new people and deepening bonds here so if you're a mega introvert shy person like me like all is not lost um, I would like to make more Japanese friends and I know the language barrier does make things a little difficult especially during my I can't speak Japanese phase, run away from Japanese phase but I'm definitely looking forward to it uh, the only thing is that right now I don't want to force things especially how my mental state feels right now where I feel like not very good about myself uh, I don't want to force myself to socialize when I know that it's draining. I, I'm taking steps to being in like more social situations here and there. Baby steps, but they are steps nonetheless. So like small progress, small progress, but taking care of myself. Yeah, it is what it is, right? And of course I keep in touch with everyone at home, either by phone, by email, by text, like we're very well connected in 2023. I did feel pretty homesick for the first time right at the one year mark, which I think was the 25th of March, I don't know when this video is coming out, uh, where I realized it had been a whole year since I had seen my family, especially like my mom, my grandpa, my brother, my cat, it was just it just hit me that I hadn't like seen them in person in a whole year. That's like the longest I'm feeling emotional. That was like the longest. I've had to switch uh, to my phone because the battery died again and the one that is charging is not done yet. And I don't, I don't want to wait another hour to finish this video. So let's continue. As I was saying, I was talking about family and um, I was having an emotional moment and the camera cut off so I guess maybe it's good timing but also the fact that right now I can't really just buy a ticket and hop on a plane and go back if anything happens or even for a joyful event or just to say hi it's not an option for me right now so that is a little bit stressful like um, my grandpa turned 92 last month and I just want to see him so much. And obviously Bachi is doing well, my cat. I miss him so much every day. But if you have following me on Instagram stories, I sometimes post photos that my mom have been, has been sending me. And he's doing fine. I just miss him and I'm not going to talk about it too much. Otherwise, I'm really going to start bawling. So, <laughs> yeah. If you want more information on what has been happening with my classmates, the issue that I had, as well as my experiences with dating in Japan, I have two separate videos that I would invite you to watch, especially the dating video. I go really well into detail about that. So I'm going to leave it here for the relationship uh, side of things. So let's touch upon uh, future plans for living in Japan. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious now that I'm not planning to go back home initially. Like, actually, initially, initially, I was supposed to move here for one year, then go back home. Then after COVID, it was going to be six months, then see what happens and maybe extend to a year, which is what happened. But I wasn't actually planning on staying here more than a year. But after a year, I know that I'm not ready to go back yet. 
um, I'm, I'm looking for a job here, I'm looking to switch from student visa to a work visa. Um, I'm definitely gonna try and stay here for a couple of more years. I don't know if this is like my forever home like it's hard to see like beyond the five year mark especially since now i've like discovered what it's like to live in a new country i don't want to limit myself like there's so many more places that i want to explore so i don't know beyond five years but i definitely see myself living here for a couple more years at least it could be five years it could be 10 years it, i don't know it's hard to tell so with that uh that's that's all I have for you, like all the updates, everything that's happened within a year. Please leave all your comments and questions, anything you want in the comments below. My brain is dead, my back is dead, my throat is about to give out. I'm gonna leave you guys for now. There are so many videos you can watch about my time here in Japan, other update videos, and of course if you feel like contributing to this beautiful mess, <laughs> that I am in right now. All the links are in the description below. I have more parts to this video coming. Should be way more lighthearted than this one, so look out for that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well. See you in the next one. Keep strong. We can all do this. We got this. Big hug and I'll word you all. See ya.